inky friends. Tonight I have a treat. We're going to play with some iron gall inks. Here I have two samples from Goulet Pins, the Rower and Clinger Scabriosa, gosh, Scabiosa, and the Rower and Clinger Salix. So a purple-ish iron gall ink and a blue-ish iron gall ink. And there are some interesting things about iron gall inks that we're gonna discuss right now. Iron gall inks are highly acidic, so if you leave them in your fountain pens, they can damage nicer pens. That's why we've got two sacrificial pilot preppies in .5 to use. So that way, if they ruin the pens, that's okay. If I can salvage the pens, that's great. No harm, no foul. And I'm going to convert these to eyedropper conversions, mostly because I don't have spare pilot, um, or I'm sorry, platinum, uh, spare platinum converters lying about. And another thing about iron gall inks is that while they might go down with a tint to them, this tint is to make your ink visible when you're writing with it initially. It will eventually dry to a black. I'm not sure if it'll dry to a black that looks kind of purple or blue or if it's going to be a true black. Iron gall inks are also supposed to be water resistant, but I have no idea if they're as water resistant as pigmented inks. So we're going to learn a whole lot real soon and I am really excited about it and if I enjoy these inks then I'll certainly consider getting the full size. So the first thing we need to do is we need to clean and prep our preppies and that basically means cleaning out the barrels and the nibs and feeds and I have a video on converting pilot preppies to eyedropper pins. So I'm actually going to do the cleaning and the filling off camera and spare you guys some, uh, not that it's pain and suffering, but some repetitive video. See for me, my camera went ahead and uh, quit recording on me without any prior notice. This has been an ongoing problem, so that's exciting. So what I went ahead and did is I did a brush test with the Scabiosa and the Salix that's where I use a brush and I ble br work the color out and then I start working water in to see how much the two will intermix and that's sort of like a watercolor test although that's not necessarily very uh, practical with um, iron gall inks like these since they will turn black over time and then I went ahead and worked my ink through my two pilot preppies um, and also did some immediate water tests and then I prepared my two 24-hour tests. So I will see you guys tomorrow and we'll see if this has changed color at all. And we'll also see if these move after a 24-hour dry time. All right guys, so it's been 24 hours. Let's go ahead and test these two colors out. I seem to have just broken my water brush, which is awesome. Applying a little too much pressure to a cheap water brush will do that. So it does look like there is some reactivation. Less than when it's freshly applied, but more as you continue to scrub. I would still be interested in trying a field test over this. So, um, so far, and I know it's only been one day, but so far it has not oxidized to black yet. I think what I'm going to do is I'm going to check in with you guys at a later date if and when these do turn black. So thank you guys so much for watching. I hope this was helpful for you. If you enjoyed this video, don't forget to leave a like and consider subscribing for more arty goodness. Have a great day, guys. Bye. So we're continuing with our Roher and Klinger iron gall inks. Actually, this is a lie. This is 54th Massachusetts. This is the wrong ink. This is the correct ink and this is the correct ink. There we go. Scabiosa and Salix. And we're going to do something different from my other tests. We are going to do first that faux ink wash technique I showed you guys a while back in um, time lapse because these inks are unusual in that they have a dye in addition to the iron gall. So I wanna go ahead and activate that dye sort of the way we do in the brush o tutorials. Um, and that way it really shouldn't be moving a whole lot when we're trying to add our color. So we're basically going to use this dye as an under color to our paint. And hopefully we won't have a problem 
with it running and spoiling the color too much. Because we're going to be using sort of a light skin tone here and if the dye were to intermix uncontrollably that might cause problems. So Iron Gall ink without the dye uh, tends to go on either very faint or basically invisible and then as the Iron Gall oxidizes um, it tends to get darker over time so that's why they add a dye and these do have be they're beautifully colored dyes in these but it's the iron gall that's actually waterproof not the dye itself so that's another reason why we're just gonna go ahead and activate it and hopefully once it's been activated like this it won't really go anywhere clean out my water brush and we'll do scabiosa and I think with scabiosa which is the purple Color. And I may be pronouncing that wrong. It probably has a much more elegant pronunciation than old scabby, scabby scabs. But that's a type of flower. I think it's actually in the honeysuckle family. If my memory serves me correctly. So it's a really pretty flower. And uh, the name is the Latin name. So... I think if you refer to it as scabiosa casually, people might not know what you're talking about. Maybe fountain pen people would. But I think this color really would suit itself for um, sort of an underwash that then has watercolor glazed on top of it. Because this is almost the same color I use when I am adding shadows to skin tones. So I am going to go ahead and let these dry and we'll check on them in a few hours. So we're continuing with our Roher and Klinger Iron Gall inks. Actually, this is a lie. This is 54th Massachusetts. This is the wrong ink. This is the correct ink and this is the correct ink. There we go. Scabiosa and Salix. And we're going to do something different from my other tests. We are going to do first that faux ink wash technique I showed you guys a while back in um, time lapse because these inks are unusual in that they have a dye in addition to the iron gall. So I want to go ahead and activate that dye sort of the way we do in the brush o tutorials. Um, and that way it really shouldn't be moving a whole lot when we're trying to add our color. So we're basically going to use this dye as an undercolor to our paint. And hopefully we won't have a problem with it running and spoiling the color too much. Because we're going to be using sort of a light skin tone here. And if the dye were to intermix uncontrollably, that might cause problems. So Iron Gall ink without the dye uh, tends to go on either very faint or basically invisible. And then as the Iron Gall oxidizes, um, it tends to get darker over time. So that's why they add a dye. And these do have be they're beautifully colored dyes in these. But it's the iron gall that's actually waterproof, not the dye itself. So that's another reason why we're just going to go ahead and activate it. And hopefully once it's been activated like this, it won't really go anywhere. Clean out my water brush and we'll do scabiosa. And I think with Scabiosa, which is the purple 
color, and I may be pronouncing that wrong. It probably has a much more elegant pronunciation than old scabby, scabby scabs. But that's a type of flower. I think it's actually in the honeysuckle family, if my memory serves me correctly. So it's a really pretty flower. And uh, the name is the Latin name. So I think if you refer to it as scabiosa casually, people might not know what you're talking about. Maybe fountain pen people would. But I think this color really would suit itself for um, sort of an underwash that then has watercolor glazed on top of it because this is almost the same color I use when I am adding shadows to skin tones. So I am going to go ahead and let these dry and we'll check on them in a few hours. guys that's the end of this ink test for Roher and Klinger Salix and Roller and Roher and Klinger Scabiosa two iron gall fountain pen inks if I notice any significant color changes in the inks themselves I will be sure to check in with you guys but I found that these perform quite well as inks for watercolor once you activate the pigments and go ahead and move them around so there's no hidden surprises the worst performer in this field test was this paper I used Cotman watercolor paper which is frankly garbage and I can't stand it and um, as you can see all of my colors look kind of chalky but you can read a full review for that up on the blog. So thank you guys so much for watching. If you enjoyed, make sure you leave a like and consider subscribing. I'll see you soon. Bye!